Similar to a spring, a pendulum is an object that exhibits motion like a simple harmonic. Take a wire suspended from a ceiling with a mass, often called a bob, hanging at some distance L. Technically, L is the length between the attachment point and the center of mass of the pendulum. So probably the easiest thing to describe at this point is the potential energy of the bob. We can, of course, describe this as mgh. Mass is pretty easy to find, and we know g, so height is the tricky part here. If the bob is hanging straight down, it is at its equilibrium point. We can define this height as zero, so that the pendulum at this point has a potential energy of zero. When we pull it back to some angle theta, we can measure the height it has changed. So h is just the distance between the equilibrium height and where the pendulum is pulled back to. So how do we find h? At equilibrium, the length of the string is still l. The height is the total length of the string minus that little part. This little part we can find with a bit of trigonometry, giving us the height equal to l minus l cosine theta. We can do a bit of factoring and end up with l times one minus the cosine of theta. So if we plug this into our potential energy equation, we have mgl times one minus the cosine of theta. And that tells us the potential energy of our bob at that point. Looking at a graph of this potential energy gives us a cosine function. Notice this is different from what we graphed as a mass on a spring. When we did that, we got a graph that was a parabola that opened up. Now there are areas that are similar to a parabola, so what we want to look at is how similar is the potential energy of a mass on a spring to the potential energy of a pendulum. So our pendulum is pulled back at some angle theta. The path that the bob travels is a distance that we can describe. We have seen this type of circular motion before, and hopefully we remember that it's just the arc length which we designate as s. If we describe our angle in radians, which we will, we can find the distance of the arc length by taking the radius of our circle, or the length of our pendulum, and multiplying it by the angle in radians. When the bob is displaced some, to some angle and then let go, the bob wants to go back to its equilibrium position. There is some restoring force that it wants to bring it back. You can probably guess that this restoring force is simply gravity which we find by taking mass times g. But not all of the gravitational force acting on the bob goes into restoring. Some of it is used up by canceling out the tension of the string. What we want to find out is how much is the restoring force. We can resolve the restoring force in terms of the tension force in the string of our pendulum. So let's make a little force triangle over here on the side. Since this is a similar triangle to the one on the top, our angle at the top is also theta. The force in line with our string of our pendulum cancels out the tension force and is mg cosine theta. That leaves our other force as the restoring force, which we find using mg sine theta. Now because of the actual definition of the sine function, for our purposes we can say that the sine of angle theta is equal to the angle theta. And since the angle theta is equal to the arc length divided by the length of our string, we can say that sine theta is also equal to the arc length divided by the length of the string. This in turn means that the restoring force for a pendulum is equal to mg over l times the arc length. So the more mass a pendulum has, the more resistant it has to being moved out of its equilibrium position. If the length of the pendulum are longer, it would be easier to pull the mass out of the equilibrium. So the mgl term is sort of like the spring constant in our mass and spring equation. Now remember that the restoring force for spring is the spring constant times displacement. These are pretty similar in that we have some displacement x in the case of a spring and s in the case of a pendulum multiplied by some constant that has to do with bringing the object back to equilibrium. Actually, let's play with this a little bit. If we assign this mgl as a force constant for a pendulum, then we can relate this back to our period equation. We can plug that constant into the k, and we end up with a period of a pendulum. Cancel out the mass to find the period of a pendulum turns out to be 2 pi times the square root of the length of the string divided by g. So in the case of a pendulum, gravity is essentially what is the, causing the restoring force, while L is trying to keep the motion from changing. So what is the acceleration due to gravity in a region where a simple pendulum having a length 75.000 centimeters has a period of 1.7357 seconds. Notice those are some very precise measurements.
And we have an equation for the period of a pendulum equal to two pi times the square root of L over G. So it looks like G is in the most inconvenient spot imaginable. So let's first square both sides to get rid of the square root. Then we could solve for G and plug in our numbers to find 9.8281 meters per second squared. While we typically use 9.8 as our value for G, there is some variation at different locations on Earth. The precision used in these measurements allows to carry out the decimal place in our answer and get a much more precise value for G. While in most cases this difference in value for G is not important, it is often used in geologic fields where small differences in gravity can aid in things like the study of plate tectonics or the searching for mineral deposits.